Welcome to the Aardvark interviews. Why, why is the name Aardvark? I really don't know. Today, uh, our first guest on the air we have is Keith Saltajanis from L.A., California. Keith is just listening or just listing at oh, this I'm point. Oh, I'm here. I'm in the there jungle. The He's... L.A. has really grown over in the last year because a lot of people left. So now it's just beautiful rivers and amazing forests. This is just, I'm outside. Oh. This is real. <laughs> How's the situation there in L.A., brother? Everything's, uh, right now, everything looks very normal. I don't think it is, but uh, everything's basically open. Uh, a lot of castings are now uh, in person again. It's uh, it's full speed ahead, so uh, we'll see how that goes. All right. How's it yeah. for you? Yeah, things are opening up here, so, you know. Great. That's why yeah. I can't wait to come back when it's like, yeah, we can go and, and go and go places and see things. And yeah, just tell Uncle Jack that you have another show you want to do. Yeah, it's a, it's a side show all about Dan Aykroyd. Uncle uh, Uncle Jack, his uh, Jack Zulo, who produced the off-Broadway play with the little help, dot, dot, dot. It's John Belushi and my friend Keith Saltajanis, which is kind of Greek, I, I believe, is... Uh, he played Dan Aykroyd, right? It's true. That's how we. It's how we met. We would not. I don't know, think we would have met without that show happening. I was. I was Dan Aykroyd. Um, my favorite scene of the show was you getting mad at at Jack, who played John Belushi. Every I would sneak in the audience every night to watch you do that scene. Oh, you're so sweet. I didn't really pay you to say that. <laughs> Venmo. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, but. Uh... Yeah, that show lasted a few weeks, and uh, we're going to talk about the movie that came after that show, uh, some uh, interesting factors in the movie that basically threw everybody under the bus. So, uh, <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. This is really yeah. new to me, because so, there was a... Uh, yeah, go if, ahead. If Jack, Jack, if you're listening now, uh, we're going to talk about the movie, but I, I, will give, I will get you on the show, Jack, to have equal time, so... I gotta say, yeah, it's a, a it was a, it's a documentary of the production of the show because it was yeah. it's a, it was a huge undertaking for him. We're just gonna talk about Jack the whole show, uh, where he yeah. brought the show from L.A. to off Broadway across the country and produced right. it, and but that's what the documentary is. Uh, I can't wait to see it. I hope Did I'm in it a lot. <laughs> There's one quote from you. You look so stupid. Oh but, no. <laughs> <laughs> let me go on with this. Uh, you played Dan Aykroyd in the show. Uh -huh. right? Did you play Dan Aykroyd in the L.A. viewing? I did. Yes. Okay. And what wh what was the L.A. View, uh, show like? Um, there did was you get, one. Did you get the hundred and fifty people that we got in New York? I mean, the numbers weren't that high. It was more like hundred and forty-five people per show. Uh, but I was in the second. Uh, I think Jack did it before, but I was in the second one during the Fringe Festival. We did the International Fringe Festival in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we did that for the first run a number of years ago. Um, and that's where I first, uh, did the Dan Aykroyd part. And then we did a, like a couple of runs just to put it on its feet before coming to New York. But it's very different, uh, cause the theater scene, it's not really a theater scene here. Theater's like more for theater nerds in LA right. while in New York, people are like, it's the to do you go and see theater. So it was right. really great. Right. I, I, I don't know if it was you or, uh, the other fellow from, Okay. Uh, we have two special guests. One is a special co-host. We'll see. I'm not a special guest anymore? Okay, great. We have two other special guests. He's a... <laughs> we have Levy, Lee Simon, who directed... Hey! Directed the off-Broadway hit... Not so much. Uh, <laughs> with a little help, dot, dot, dot. It's John Belushi. And we have my special co-host, Artie wow. Brennan. And we're going to take a vote at the end of the show... This is streaming live on YouTube. Will Artie keep his job as special co-host? So you can all all vote for that. The people have the power. And uh, welcome, gentlemen. Do you see, uh, what's his name, Sasquatch over here? Keith Seltzer, John. <laughs> out in the woods. Yeah. This is, uh, sorry. I mean, I'll just say, before anyone votes, Artie, you were late to the beginning of the show, so I feel like you've already missed some points as a co-host. Just saying. Fired. Look at, <laughs> I start, I look at his mic. Fired. 
Look at his microphone and everything. Boy, this guy ain't oh, playing. Yeah. He ain't oh, playing. Is he, is he using yeah. it, though? Is that for later? It's good I, to see you. I haven't seen you guys yeah, since New York. Levy and Artie. I haven't seen any of you guys since New York. Yeah. It's great. It's good and, to see uh, you, too. All of you. Hey. Levy Lee, the fantastic playwright, director, actor as well on Broadway. And you know what's funny? I was taking notes because I like to kind of be prepared for these, these friggin' things. And... Uh, Levy Lee wrote a play called For the Love of Freedom. And it was, uh, it was like a trilogy of plays. It was three hours, almost four hours long. And it was on the theater. It was in the theater. Okay. And the play was about, it, from the 1700s, it's about the assassination of the Haitian leader at the time. Is that correct, Levy? Levy Lee? It, it's about, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, it, it's about the first of all. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? Hey. <laughs> oh my God! It's really good to see you guys, man. It's been yeah, yeah. been a minute, you know, because we hit with the play in 2019, and then next thing you know, we we're in COVID, right? And yeah, you know, and yeah. it's like everything shut down. We oh, we lost a year, so to speak, and. Um, uh, so here we are. I mean, um, coming out of it, we're not over it, but at least we've come this far. Um, and Andrew, thank you for having me on. Uh, I feel, you know, blessed and honored always. You know, and one of the great things about doing theater is that we get the opportunity to like meet the most amazing people, you know, in our ride, you know, from show to show, from audition to audition sometimes, you know. I've met friends over the years that audition that are still my friends today. So, um, but it's really, really wonderful, Andrew. To answer your question, um, the For the Love of Freedom trilogy, three plays that each run um, <laughs> three hours, so it's nine hours of theater. And uh, it's about the the Haitian Revolution. Not, not a lot of people know that Haiti, this impoverished country, which just is in the news now because of the assassination of the president in a coup d'etat. Haiti was the only country in the history of the world, not just on the Western Hemisphere, in the history of the world to free themselves from slavery or from bondage to a violent revolution. And uh, Toussaint Overture was the leader of that revolution along with Jean-Jacques Desiree and the Army for Stuff. 17, it started in 1791. They got their liberation complete in 1802 uh, under Desiree. And that history is not well known. Um, and I was fortunate enough to get the opportunity to write the plays um, that told the story. And, and you were spurred on to write this play reading your biography, by going to a play, actually. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was in, I, listen, I had no idea at the time that I would end up writing a play, but I, I was, um, oh man, I was in my 20s, and um, uh, the play um, uh, for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough, um was on broadway at that time and my girlfriend at that time um gave me the show for my birthday party. i remember birthday party for my birthday and i went to see it and yeah i don't know if you know it's his work where she does a lot of it was a choreo poem. she does a lot of poetry and this actress you know in red they were all in different colors this a actress in red uh, did a monologue about Toussaint Overture, and I, I was like, "Who is that?" You know, I I I, I wanted to know more uh, about him, and then I discovered at the Liberation Bookstore up in Harlem, where I'm from, um, I discovered this book called The Black Triumvirate um, by Benjamin Levin, and um, and I opened the first page and I couldn't put it down. It was not just history, it was drama. It was it was everything that great drama, it was, you know, mystery and intrigue and 
and you know uh rebellion and it was just full and i said to myself at the time because i wasn't writing then, i said man this will make a, a great movie or it might make a great play and i didn't know at that time that i would be the one to write and as fate would have it and the universe would have it years later um i got the opportunity to go to the University of Iowa Playwrights Workshop to get the master's, and one of the requirements is that I write a piece of play. All their all their graduate um, students have to write a thesis play in order to finish and get the master's. Degree. And uh, I was interviewed by my advisor, and he said, uh, he said, yeah, we, you know, you'll have to write a thesis, you know, at the end of for years, I, I already know it. Right? And he said, well, I said, I'm going to write a, a trilogy about the Haitian of <laughs> oh, That's a lot of words. <laughs> like, it's a lot of words. It's a lot, it's a lot, a lot of, of words, words. world. <laughs> yeah. And excuse my tank top. I'm in L.A. It's 100 degrees. I did not know this was going to be live. I would have dressed up. I would have put on a shirt and a tie. But, um, you know, this is like I'm in my house. I got like air conditioning but it's still hot. And I really did realize that I, I was actually going to be seen. I thought it was just going to be an audio thing. But uh, but I, I, I'm i okay. You want me to put on the shirt, Andrew? I'm okay? No, please. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite director, I'm going to ask him to put on a shirt. This guy, he's not, I told him on the phone call in California, he's not like a god to me, but he's Pretty much the demigod. So uh, <laughs> you 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 could wear nothing at all, basically. And I'm good with, I'm good with that. Audie, what do you think? Get in here, Audie. Say something. Uh, Come on. Man. It's nice and cool here in New York compared to LA. It's like ninety five. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm doing <laughs> up here. <laughs> now now this when revolt that play, did you write all three? Yeah. I did. I, I wrote I, I, uh, I, like uh, one shot, or did you do? Was it like um, over a couple of years? Over a few years, um, because the thing about it was was crazy. Was that I had been prepping for this long before I even went to the University of Iowa. I was so intrigued by the by the history of it, and because there was so much going on, you know, and um, I would sometimes, it, I would go to the New York Public Library on 42nd Street and just grab books and read books on the subject matter. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. these guys defeated, the, the greatest emperor at the time was Napoleon, and they kicked Napoleon's ass. You know, I mean, Napoleon sent 80 ships over to re the Haitians, and they were like, no, we're not having it. <laughs> You know, wow. they, they were like they were fierce, dude. You know, and and, and here's here's a funny here's a funny one one funny story. I gotta share this. Gotta, this is one of my favorites. Toussaint Louverture, who was forty three years old at the time of the of the revolution, and at the time everything took off. He wasn't initially the lead, right? But everyone wanted him to be because he could read. And he was very religious and he had, you know, and he was just a sensible man. He had, his family had, had a, a really amazing background. So he was respected amongst the people and they wanted him to be. So finally, and he used to read like all, like he read about Spartacus. He read uh, about, um, he would read Shakespeare, you know, so he knew of the Scottish play, right? I mean, and then the Burnham Woods. So when there was a point where the French army was going through the uh, jungle areas and stuff, trying to find these Haitian soldiers, and he had them chop up bushes and weeds and and all kinds of stuff, and they hid behind these bushes and these weeds. And when the French soldiers were approaching, they kept thinking that they saw the bushes moving. It's like, 
<laughs> and but and what, by the time they realized that they it was too late. Oh hi love. You're it, wonderful. It was, it was too okay. late. And I'm glad you got just stop and say hello, okay? <laughs> okay, bye now. You do a great job, Sonny. Thank you. I appreciate that, whoever that was. But uh no. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I do appreciate you. <laughs> Artie. Artie, is that you? Who is yeah. that? I, I mean, that. Huh? Okay, I'm, I'll mute it. Oh, wait. Oh, okay, wait. Oh, am, I, am I muted? Am I My muted? I'm unmuted. I'm unmuted. Okay. Oh, your mother in law. Does she want to be on the show, Artie? Sounds like it. <laughs> when I go home? Yeah, hold on one second. No, don't go home. Be on the show. Come on. Artie's not saying anything. Yeah, Get on the show. We lost Levy Lee, so that's sad. But uh, I was going to say about can you, with what Levy was saying, like, it makes sense because Haiti gets battered by hurricanes multiple times a year. So, like, they're like, Napoleon? Pff, I got this. At least you're not a hurricane. I was thinking they were hiding in the weeds, but was somebody smoking those weeds? Oh, I was thinking. <laughs> hey, hey they probably, they probably did, you know. But um, yeah, it's 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 a great story. So did and they did they ambush them from the weeds? Of course, of yeah. course. I mean, two two saw military genius, you know, because he was a real. Um, guerrilla fighter and uh, he created the ideas of guerrilla warfare that people are still using to this day excellent right and and so a lot of what's happening what has happened to haiti since 1820 uh, had to do with the fact that a couple of things on on the political side france brokered their deal with the new Haitian leader, which was a whole nother story. But these guys caved in and allowed France to uh, tax them millions and millions of dollars that they didn't finish paying until 1947 or something like that, and which broke the island. That's why it's a poor island to this day. The other part of it is that when the African enslaved people were praying to their gods, African gods, and Dumbala, you know, is the main one. Uh, and they prayed that they be given the power to liberate themselves from slavery. Um, Dumbala broke the deal with them and said, look, if you, I'm going to give you this power. You're going to defeat the French, but you have to live in harmony together. And so wow. they defeated the French. That is so but, cool. But they did not live in harmony. And mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons that the island has been had a difficult time. This is folklore. This is, you know, if you go down there, this is what people will tell you. You know, I've read about it. And this, you wonder, it's like, man, you know, with that kind of like backdrop, that kind of history, what is wrong with the, you know, like you say, he, you know, been hit with hurricanes and all yeah. kinds of, of disasters. It sounds like, it seems like, man, it may be something to it. It may be something to it, you know? Mm. So, anyway, that's that's that. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Wow, yeah. there's a lot of history there. And did you know, well, Lee knows, of course, but in the 1790s there, Haiti was the only black republic outside of Africa that existed in the 1790s. Right, but right. so, well, that was the result. I mean, this is a big world, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, that, that's the result. And I was fortunate to have the Roby Theater here in L.A., which is uh, Danny Glover's theater company, along with Ben right. Guillory, produced all three plays. And we won, we were nominated for many, like, NAACP awards. I was nominated three times, well, and ovation awards out here in LA, and uh, we won a number of uh, 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 major. Uh, I'm going to ask you one more one more question yes. here, because uh, I actually saw one of your plays, and it was streaming on this streaming devices. I don't know what's it called, Audi. 
Which Body. one was it? The computer? <laughs> yes, that's the it. Computer? The, the computer? Computer. <laughs> that's correct, Artie. Uh, <laughs> get those so votes in. It was online. We'll, we'll already be co host <laughs> next week. <laughs> okay, the name the name of the play that was streaming on Zoom or some shit. Zoom is that one of the places? Yeah, yeah that that is the one. That's it, the one. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, this friggin' play was good. I had my girlfriend watch it, and she loved it. She loved it like unbelievable. And the name of the play was. Uh, that's the other. The guest at Central Park West. Uh, yeah, yeah. Man, I love that play. It was all about race, 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 but, you know, inside, like the black race, people who move up to Central Park West and somebody who sees a friend from the past who's maybe down on his luck and how we view people when we, you know, get a a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Do we look down on people? How do we react to people Mm. from our past? What do you think, Lee? Keep it horizontal, please, Lee. <laughs> Whatever that means. I'm trying, I'm <laughs> sounds trying, sounds kind of dirty, but yeah, you know. it sounds kinky to me. But yeah. I'm, uh, uh, <laughs> um, no, my 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 Bluetooth thing is about to run out, and I'm trying to find my my headphone. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So if I if I get lost, I'll be right back. Okay, just so you know. All right. uh, can, you see, can you still see me? Yeah. 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 Okay, so I can't see you. What was your uh, point, point of that play? And I would suggest everyone uh, see this play because this play is lit. And I'm not, I'm uh, not going to lie. If I don't like a play or something by anybody, I'm not going to tell you to watch it. All right? You got to uh, trust me on that. So The play That's is That's true. If you know Andrew. Uh, about, the play is actually about to be a movie. Um and we hope to be going into production or pre-production. We're going to pre-production in the fall. Hopefully, 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 put fingers crossed. But uh, the guest at Central Park West is about, you know, real quick, is about a guy, black guy, who is a professor and he just won a Nobel Peace Prize. And uh, he's having a dinner party on Central Park West uh, with some of his uh, professor colleagues, you know, these scholarly academics, highbrow, and they get a and they get a visitor, you know, at the party, um, who is from the past of the guy that won the Nobel Peace Prize. And no one, not even his wife knew about this friend who comes into the party and he's obviously been homeless. You know, he's dirty, stinky, smelly, you know, but then and, and he's he looks stained. And then we find out that they have this uh, uh, past history that is really, really deep, deep and embedded in in sacrifice. You know what? You know because without trying to give away, um, you know, spoiler alert kind of thing. Um, I guess know. guess he didn't want to give it away. Uh, never <laughs> no know. Spoilers. Uh, my, it's modern technology. <laughs> now, Keith, let me ask you a freaking question here. Go for it. I dare you. You're like in the woods there or something, but Keith Saltagianis played Dan Ackery, did a damn good job of it, too. Thank and he's, so much. Yeah. he's a wizard on the harmonica. Oh, Artie, what do you think about Keith? I know you don't, you don't really like him personally, but put... Put that aside. I've been waiting just, to hear this for a long time. I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you know, um, you could not like someone personally, but love their work. That's how I feel about Keith. <laughs> now, he actually uh, actually already mentioned the cool people from L.A., and you were in that nest. My favorite thing about um, Artie was it wasn't until the last show where it's like, wait, you do improv too? We should have been like playing around. <laughs> it's like we didn't until yeah, the yeah, last yeah, show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, what yeah. uh, let's go do some shows. I'm going back. I'm going back to LA. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Okay. <laughs> let's let's get Jack to buy yeah. his tickets. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we're gonna fly over here. Now, Keith, Keith. I love Keith. By the way, love you. It's you nice too, to see you. I know. It's like a fun, well. it's a love fest here. But yeah. Keith, let me ask you a question. Do you teach acting or improvisation now or something? 
Yeah, I have uh, my own improv school that I started in 2010 called Improv LA. Uh, so I started that from small things of teaching for donation only in the park to where I have five classes a week at least with multiple teachers and I've taught all around the, the world oh, nice. with the school. That's the short answer. So yes, Improv LA. Okay, and you have a film nice. out now, now or something? What's going I on? I do. I have a stock. I have a st stock I, substance. Yeah. Where's your research? Where's your note cards? Come on. I, I don't. I don't want to look. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's a uh, called stock footage. Stock and footage. I, I got I it written here. Yeah. There you go. I shot it during uh, the pandemic because you know we can't. You can't keep a creative person down. Uh, so it's about a guy who lives in the world of stock footage. If you know those things, like the <laughs> the royalty free or everything super cheesy. So it's a guy who lives in that world, but then he becomes self-aware and he wants to get out into the real world. So that's a, a new film that is in the festival circuit now. It's kind of a weird concept, you know? Thank you. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Most of my stuff Dude, is like that you... sci-fi where it's like alternate yeah, yeah. realities because I love that stuff. Did you green screen uh, yourself into like, did you like write it with pre-existing footage in mind? When I you, did. I, I got a bunch of the, the cheesiest footage I can find, and I shot it right here, except this was a green screen instead of a forest. Nice. Oh, wow. So I just found the, the cheesiest, dumbest footage I can find and then worked the script into that. Uh, and then oh. there's an over overlaying arc and, and, and a nice happy ending, hopefully. Uh, but all from you seem cheesy, and the, all the music is royalty-free. Like, everything about it is royalty-free. <laughs> wow. Cool. Oh, that's this awesome. Besides the idea. besides Thanks. the obvious question of why weren't me and Artie in this film, another question <laughs> I, I have is... If you were in uh, stock footage, you would be in it. <laughs> no other real humans were in it. Now, is stock footage like the Thelma Louise car going off the cliff? I don't think that's stock... Was that stock footage? Or did they actually shoot... Was that part of the movie that they shot? I don't know. I'm asking Maybe you. Like, you're, um, you're, uh, you're the old Tunes tour... Is, Toons is the cat when uh, when he would go off the cliff. That's stock footage. So you act from you, SNL. Oh yeah, yep, yep. So <laughs> That's a you, great sketch. Do like, you actually <laughs> think <laughs> you think that Thelma and Louise actually went off the cliff? I feel I don't I don't know much about the movie, and I've actually never seen it, which is a shame. <laughs> but I feel like they probably filmed a car going off with those actors in it, and the actors we see now are just body doubles. And they spent all that money crashing a car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was they decided this yeah. is how we'll end our lives and our careers. It was a uh, that has to be that's why the movie's so famous, right? Because they actually killed themselves in the movie. Is that how the movie goes? Yeah, I wish they killed Brad Pitt, yeah. but that didn't happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> Lee, Lee, where did you go, baby? <laughs> uh, you well, I, as, as I told you, my 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 uh, my buds, my buds, oh, like, the they buds, went out yeah. on me, and so I had to change up here put my headphones on this will not have a problem so okay. do you anyway. want to fin finish up what you were saying about the guest? I, I don't even know where i left off where did well, i get cut off the guest at central park west right you were explaining this class situation knowing somebody from your past but you don't want to give anything away because so was... yeah because the homeless guy the two guys that were best friends and they lost contact and and the guy's having a dinner party. He just won this Nobel Peace Prize. And his old friend shows up who is homeless and desperate. But we find out that he's a lot more than that. We find out that he's actually brilliant. But we also find out that one of them sacrificed a, his life for the other one. Right. And, and that part I'm not going to give away. But there is a storyline in the play where the homeless guy is hell bent on on blowing up the statue that is in front of the Museum of Natural History because it's Teddy Roosevelt on a horse right. with a Native American <clears throat> and an enslaved African on the side of him and you know it's a it's a subliminal message of white supremacy right and, when did, when uh, did you write this I wrote it in 2006 because this is so important today with everything that's going on right. with statues. In right. fact, Robert E. Lee's statue was just taken down exactly. a couple of days ago. Finally. Exactly. 
Exactly. So what do so, you think? What do you think? Should these statues? Well, what, 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 I, what I think is, you know, one of the things that I try to do on a personal level as an artist, as a writer, is I try to have my finger on the pulse of what's going on in the world. You know, it's like I really, and I've been lucky in that um, I'm becoming kind of known for it because, you know, I've had these plays that address social issues and, and a lot of times they've been before, they've been ahead of its time. And, um, you know, and I've gotten in, I want to say trouble, but I've had my, my issues, you know, being out here in La La Land, you know, and sometimes having to deal with, with studio heads and people that just don't get it until, oh, shit. You 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 said that. Yeah, right. I did. I said that shit ten years ago. Right, right, right. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Because I know? was I was watching your play. Uh, I don't know, like a couple of months ago, and I was like, "Oh, this is happening right now." You know, yeah. that's why I wanted to ask you why when you actually wrote this because. Well, the funny th not the funny thing is the, the, the last summer um, the uh, the museum you know, came out and said that they made an announcement that they were taking the statue down. And that's uh -huh. when the workshop theater who did, one, there were two productions of it in New York, but the workshop theater, which did the 2008 and nine production, um, they called me up and said, look, Lee, did you hear what the Museum of Natural History is doing? And I said, yeah, they said, we, we want to do a reading of the play as a commemoration. And I oh, said, nice. yeah, let's do it, you know. Wow. So, you know, and then as a result of doing that, we were approached by uh, Mojo Films, uh, which is known for taking plays and making them into movies. And we got a contract from it. That, yeah, that's, that's unbelievable, man. Yeah. Just What's your next project? What do you what, what, so I so I'll know what's going to happen in fifteen years. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 you know that is that's one the movie the Central Park uh, the guest at Central Park. West I can't movie. I can't wait I can't wait. Uh -huh. And and then um, I wrote a I wrote my new play is called Fractured, which oh. uh, I wrote as part of the actor studio playwrights director's unit whatever and they required because i'm new to them and they required that i write a new play and i wrote this play called fractured which kind of explores these you know relationships and and of people that are you know 50 and over and um is a lot of uh, things that happen, as you know, Andrew, in relationships, you know, and and things are changing now. You know, I mean, I know Keith and Artie might not really, like, they're young guys, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, this, this for, and I'm going out on a limb here and I might get in trouble, I don't care. But, you know, the Me Too and Enough movement, which is a needed, necessary movement, don't get me wrong, but, you know, for some some of us old school guys who really do respect women, but at the same time have a way of being in the world. Right. So you're talking yeah. about pe people like Bill Cosby, of course. Well, 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 Bill Cosby, yeah, he's deserving of all of the the things that's going down, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you get a guy, let's say a guy somewhat like a guy like Levy Lee Simon. And, and, and you know, I'm walking down the street and I see a gorgeous lady and I say, hey, baby, how you doing? You looking really nice this evening. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm not supposed to say that anymore. Uh -huh. I, get, I might get slapped in the face. Or I, or, or I could get like, you know, I could get a charge for saying, you look right. good, baby. So, so you know, can you can you still say these things, but not touch no, them? No, I, I, the thing is, I, I don't know. I don't know. It depends. Well, Artie, now, you know, I, yeah. I mean, I don't know if Keith I, and Artie um, like Artie. Ever Artie were. used to be a corporate lawyer. So, Artie, what do you think? Oh yeah. 
uh, I played a corporate lawyer in a sketch once. Um, <laughs> no, I know exactly. I I know what you're saying it's in a it's a gray area because everything um, a lot of stuff online gets uh, gets blown out of proportion where it, it leads yeah. from the original um, good idea. So I know what you mean right. that you're not. It's difficult to navigate uh, the world where right. you want to be right and you want to be doing the right thing. Oh yeah. But like you said, yeah. you know, you you know, you're you you think you're also being uh, you're being nice or complimentary, and you're not sure if you can do that. What do, What do you well, think, Keith? Can you say say shit like that? I mean, because you're you're obviously handsome, and I'm not. Could you say something like that? See, I think that's also part of it that some people are allowed to say things and some people aren't. It's like yeah, it's yeah. what it's everybody or it's nobody. Uh, where yeah, mm -hmm. some people it, it goes. The whole thing is about some people. Other, <laughs> the whole thing is some people shouldn't have privilege and some people don't. That's what all of it really comes down to. And it's like I'm just trying to communicate to you because we're all humans, and especially after last year, communication is tough if you're not just texting someone. So face to face communication. How do you even do it? Most people are so awkward and don't know how to do it. They're not trying to be offensive, but we just don't know how to, yeah. how to communicate. Some people are offensive, and then those people don't do it. Don't be offensive. Don't be dicks. <laughs> well, how, how did you meet right, your wife? Right. How did you meet your wife, Artie? <laughs> uh, I was walking down the street, and I said, hey, baby, you look good. We met in college. Okay. All right. So I don't have a great story like that. <laughs> uh, that was a wonderful story. Um, Keith, you got the stock footage movie, right? Do you yes, know, I do. <clears throat> do you know about this, Lee? And uh, No, what's going on? Artie? Keith, tell us more about this film. I... Where is it? Where can I watch this film? Right now... Stock footage, this film that I made uh, last year, filmed entirely using stock footage and green screen, uh, is making this festival circuit. So it's going around the country, some even international. It might be in the London Film Festival coming up. Nice. Uh, nice. So yeah, just uh, like I said, you can't keep a creative person down. If you can't go out and film with people, find another way to do it. And that's what I did. Okay, nice. se segueing to Artie, you just had a film premiere in London a, few mo a couple of months ago, didn't you? That's right, and and you were in it. Well, of course, but um. tell us the <laughs> tell us about this film because you know what the thing is. My question is: Can you just be funny anymore without any social value? Did you notice Barat's last film, the the last Barat had all these social values at the end? They changed all the laws in Afghanistan or wherever the hell they are now. The film you did doesn't really have any redeeming values, basically, right? True. true. Um, but it, like at, at its core, it's basically, I think what it's doing is showing you this is what people on social media think living in a van is life, that it, you know, van life is cool and <laughs> take a picture when... In reality, it's the film that we were parroting, which is Nomadland. So uh, that the guys you were, the characters you were playing were the real people who were, they're down on their luck. And the characters that Brittany and myself were playing were the assholes on Instagram who think that, you know, I take some pictures and say, this is so cool that I live in a van and people should like it. So yeah. I thought there was a, there was a little bit of something to it. That's not when I started writing it at all. It was really just when I the the way it worked out was we were given two days to film uh, a movie, and we were given in a there was a um, the movie was picked for you, and I was given Nomadland, which was to me this is impossible to parody because it's a when you see it it's a sad movie. <laughs> so it was really just trying to figure out what what can I make funny about this, and that's just how it landed on. On that, and all along, I, I thought I was like Andrew, you're you're in it from the very first thing that I wrote down. I was like, I thought, okay, I thought you had somebody else in mind first, and they dropped out. I didn't want to. No, I was like, this is not. terrible. I'm, I'm out. I'm doing it. <laughs> Get someone else. <laughs> okay, I wasn't going to say anything, but <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> now this film, 
this film is now in two two uh, two fe film festivals in the United States, so it might have a chance, right? I mean, uh, your yeah, film um, was the only film from the United States to appear in London, correct? Yeah, I think everyone else was from. Uh, if they weren't from England, they were from Europe. Yeah, right. So That's you knew great. you knew you weren't going to win shit there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that was part of it too. Um, of like uh, doing it w was like they might not get the humor in this at ah, all because you know right. humor is subjective, and especially when it, when you're crossing the pond or you're crossing languages, like you know, you can do a Charlie Chaplin, and everyone's going to laugh at that. Yeah, but I didn't I'm think that was going to work. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure We're all just out. We're falling. Right, the one that won. I'm still trying to figure that out, but it's different. That was very, very specific. Yeah, to like living in London because it was about uh, parking your car there. So uh, yeah, but we'd um, like to thank. I mean, the DAFTA awards. The DAFTAs yeah. are satirical awards that are based on the BAFTA awards, which are the British Academy Awards. So we were. Uh, we Artie's film was the only film picked from the United States. I'd like to compliment you on that, Artie. I thought the film and my oh, my fr my friends. I sent you a videotape of one of my friends going balls ass crazy over it. So <laughs> well, I thought you did an amazing job in it. Uh, I tell you that you didn't believe me, but uh, you you did. He's he's amazing in it, guys. Um, well, yeah, as we yeah, right wants now, it's in the. Uh... As Lee once said, the "Battle of the Sketches." You're a wonderful actor, Andrew, but you're not going to play that woman. I'll never forget <laughs> that. So, <laughs> so it's in the Battle of the Sketches, right? It's in the Battle of the Sketches right now. Yeah. Um, and what else? You picked is, up another nomination, another film festival. Um, that is correct, and that and you one, forgot the name. Is, you got to do. You got to uh, research yeah. yourself, Artie. I got to look this up. <laughs> yeah, I got I to research myself right now. Um, oh, the Indie Shorts, uh, Indie Shorts Magazine Film Festival. All right. They're uh, an online publication for uh, short films, and I think they've been around for like ten years, and they decided to finally do a film festival of their own. So this long, the, the other day just got film? into that. How long is your film, Artie? Um, it's it's around uh, five minutes, just on under five. Okay. So short and sweet. It's really uh, short. Um, yeah. Well, congratulations. We actually on filmed it in in one day. Thank you. Congratulations on that. That's awesome. Yeah, but the pol police were Thank chasing us that whole day. So we did. We got oh, chased was, by that. Uh, made it. That made National it fun. Park. Yeah, it was fun. It did. I'll never forget <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we find and uh, we moved to another location in uh, by Rockaway, and we thought we were all good. And then the same park police guy showed right. up. And yeah, this... kicked us out of the spot in Brooklyn. Yeah, the exact yeah. same dude drove up, but then yeah. it wound up. Um, it wound up. It was okay for us to film. Uh, yeah, yeah, because of the we rappers were trying to be respectful, and you know, because of the rappers that protected. Yeah, then a rap video happened to be. Filming next to us, and they started rolling. They were so these, nice. Like they were so super expensive nice. foreign cars, <laughs> and they were very nice. And it was kind of like, they hey, we'll, nice. we'll give each other time because we're filming right in the same like uh, desolate area by the beach. But uh, it, it worked out great. It, um, I was surprised. I thought we were gonna have the rap music in the background, but the director for that video came over to my brother who was um, on the camera and just said like, hey, let's just. Uh, you know, if one of us is being too loud for the other, we'll we'll all work it out. So it was great. It was nice. Well, you were it was afraid like everyone's you know finally filming something after COVID. So let's all let's all be cool with each other, have a good time. Well, let me ask you a question: Were you afraid a turf war would develop between your movie people and the rap people? <laughs> <laughs> no, because they got the their their team were, were the cinematographer and director were so. Uh, Nice when they came over that it was like immediately like all right we're all good. Uh, they were very nice. When so, the cars so all, started rolling in, I was like, I don't know, you know, when the those cars, the Lamborghini nice. and the Maserati started driving in, I was like, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear any of the actors in our movie. 
these guys revving it up. Yeah. But it worked nice. I wonder who those rappers were. They were nice people. I got to say that. So, I think my brother some... actually has the, um, the, the artist's name. We oh. looked up, and they had a couple of cool videos that they had done, they, the guys who made it. Excellent. With the same cars, that's how we figured out they were rented. <laughs> that's awesome. That is so cool. Now, Keith, yeah. Keith, what are you doing next now? What am I doing next? Well, an hour ago, I finished the first draft of a book that I've been writing off and on since 2015. So I'm wow. glad that I, got, I was like, I want to get it done before these interviews today. So I got that first draft done. And then, uh, thank you. And I'm also uh, outlining a feature that I'm going to write coming up. So that's, uh, I can't stop. Nice. My, my issue is I have too many things that I'm writing at once. And I'm, I'm writing one, and I go, oh, I want to write that other one now. So. Mm -hmm. uh, how old are you, Keith? Oh, that's for you to guess. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. What makes it's like, you it's like 30 stick to that, like 30. film something? Say that again? <laughs> What makes you, like, I have the same problem as you. There's too yep. many things sitting around my desk, too many pieces of paper, 10 books for each different thing. What yep. makes you actually go like, all right, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with this one for now right. and try Good to finish question. it? Good question. I, well, it's easy to, to talk about things that you want to make. That's so easy. Like, everyone yeah. can have an idea whether you're an artist or not. You're like, I have this idea for a sketch or a movie. You do it like this. But it comes time to actually doing the work. And not that it's going to be easy. That's where the work comes in. But the more you do it, the better you'll get. So sometimes I might have to pause a little bit, but I make sure I have a definitive thing. So this, the, the, the stock footage film that I made, I was outlining another feature. And then in the middle of it, I was like, I want to do this right now because I can do it. I can do it and get it complete while I'm still doing the feature because that's going to take a little bit longer. So I'm going to, I'm going to shoot yeah. this thing. I'm going to write this thing, <laughs> shoot it, edit it, get it, get it done uh, in a few months and then go back to the feature. So yeah, it's like, I always want to be putting uh, stuff out, always having the output, because if you just talk about it, then why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. Make it. All right. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make it and then re-edit it. Go, go to the next thing. Go back to it. You guys know. Everyone here knows this. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not creative. But <laughs> let me ask you a question. The 800-pound gorilla in the room. <laughs> there was a movie made about, with a little help, dot, dot, dot. It's John Belushi. Did anybody see that movie after uh, when it was produced and put out a few months ago or whenever the hell of COVID? I'm timeless now, so I don't know. Did anybody see that freaking movie? Artie? I, see it. I haven't seen it. I've only heard about it. Artie, you saw the movie. I did see it, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. So what, no, I did. what do you um, think about that it's interesting. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's more of a movie about Jack, um, and and his process than about the play. So it's not about the people who got thrown under the bus, right? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> it's a documentary about the making of the play, right? It's not. Well, it's not. It's not yeah. a movie version of the play. Yeah. It's yeah, not a film kinda. version of the play. Yeah, but it's uh, what, what do right, you think? There's not a lot of the. I was going to say there's not a lot of the um, footage um, that they shot of the play actually in the film. Oh, it's wow. more of the leading, kind of leading up to it. Um, it's, how, it's more how it felt, like following uh, Jack's process and journey, I would say. Yeah. Isn't the title, like, Jack Makes a Play? Isn't it, like, right in the title it says what it is? <laughs> yeah. 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 What, what do you think, Lee, about Jack Makes the Play? Is that, I don't know. <laughs> I think it is. I actually you think know, it is. Uh, at, at the risk of throwing people under the bus, not throwing people under the bus because that's not what I do. Um, you know, I felt like there was an intention, and it just n never really came together. Um. That's my feeling about it. Um, you know, it's a documentary, and um, and I and I felt like, you know, it ne didn't necessarily follow the protocols of a documentary. But 
you know, um, not, not that I'm, I'll be the last person to put something, anything in a box. And so there was, I think there was a, an attempt to be creative there. Um, and, you know, whether, whether it worked or not, um, that is for the, that is for the eye of the beholder. <laughs> I'm not going to tell anybody that they should or should not see it. You know, okay. make your own, make up your own. Yeah. Well, I'll, give, I'll give you a quote from the play itself. Here's a quote. Uh, the, play, the, play, the play started out as a disaster, and it finished as a disaster. <laughs> but that in-between, that was nice. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm not commenting on that, bro. <laughs> well, um, the, the filmmaker's a good guy, you know, and and oh, I he's a very attempt, good guy. I'm gonna have him on yeah. the show to, to, yeah, yeah. You can ask him because the attempt, of was, course, um, of course. Uh, I know you will. I know What's he you gonna will. do? Bomb my apartment? <laughs> <laughs> so. you know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, but I, but on a, on a whole nother note, you know, I gotta tell you, I gotta say this while I while it's on my mind. Um, I'm sitting here with 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 you three guys, and it's bringing back, you know, the the experience, and of, and I really, really, you know, appreciate all three of you so much. One of one of one of the one of the, I did not know what to expect coming into this project. I, I you know, I. It, it all kind of happened like, you know, on a fluke. It wasn't planned. And um, I walk in and um, we didn't even know who was going to be in the play. The New York cast came in, Artie came through, you know, then of course Keith had been with the play before and, um, you know, and, and Jack, you know, Keith, you, you, Jack, Jack is one of your, your biggest supporters. I know you know that. And, um, and, you know, Andrew, you came through. Other members of the cast in New York came through. And it was just, it was just a, that New York rehearsal, man, it was just fun. I look forward to, like, getting to rehearsal yeah. every day. And you guys were so, like, like willing to to take direction and to be bring all your talents and be creative and stuff you know already did some stuff in rehearsal man that I, I i would just like walk out you stupid you know and just walk out of the room <laughs> you know and 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 uh and then andrew you know take 25 you know we doing the 25 takes and shit but then you finally get it and it, 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 it everybody was happy you know i mean it was just yeah. it was just a great working environment great creative environment that's uh, that and was in my uh, college yearbook yeah. most likely to take 25 takes yeah. <laughs> well <laughs> but but you never gave up you no. never got angry you never you know, you always were just like you were a trooper, man. You were a trooper, dude. I'll never forget that. You know. Um, so anyway, I, I just felt I, I should, uh, you know, say that while we're here, you know, and didn't yeah. want to get off and go. Oh, I should have said this, or you know, um, you know, we should always um, acknowledge. You know, I mean, people have such a tendency to to talk negatively about everything these days you know and i just want to acknowledge you know the good shit you know can i curse the good shit yeah yeah, yeah. we're we're beyond beyond the uh, initial 10 minutes so uh anybody else have anything to plug before we go into the three questions uh well my i just want to start to die on. so i might have to uh plug my phone in hey go ahead Artie. Mm. All right. Uh, I was just gonna jump on there and say uh, that I I miss I miss it too. I loved the direction and what you did and like what you in those rehearsals how you gave us the freedom to how you just kept saying that like you know come on just do it and you would tell me like oh come on I know you can find something like, go even bigger go crazy and that's what <laughs> I do stuff like that and then you'd be like all right and sometimes like okay that's not gonna work but like the fact that you were like do it. And do it this way and do that. It was great that it was like where we found the stuff um, was just a lot of fun. 
and yeah. it was it didn't feel like uh i had to do something very specific this way where you were like let's let's find it i i love doing that that, that was that yeah. was great you were great man thank you thank you well you know i tr always trust the organic process and and um you know you guys bought it so wouldn't allow for me to do it. I just okay. You got to hear it. You go there, go there, whatever. You know. Anyway, questions. You got questions? I have What's questions. But uh, thanks everybody for being here and your attention to all this because uh, you know it, it might not have been a really great show with me here by myself talking to myself. <laughs> you know, it would have been a you know therapy <laughs> therapy visit. So uh, thank you for coming. I got three questions for Artie though. Artie, your latest okay. your latest short film Nomad hashtag Nomad Life premiered in London and got a lot of yucks. But would you change anything about that right now? Uh, no, well, that's that's an interesting question. Um, we shot that because we shot that in one day. Right. I'm uh, extremely happy with it. Uh, if I could change anything, it would be if we had a couple more days to shoot it. And we could have got some, um, some you know, some better stuff. But I, there's nothing I would change. Uh, everyone, uh, all the actors did great, and it it is that's what it was. That that was the whole point. Can you do this filming in one day? I like that they gave you two weeks to edit it because that would have <laughs> been difficult. Um, but no, I um, I think that's what it was. That was the point of it. Like, see if you can make something. Yeah. In this amount of time, yeah, and, and, and it was we did, uh, it was very pleasing pleasing to have Vandy Taylor and, and Barney chasing us around the lot. So that oh, was yeah, fun too. it added to the fun. Yeah, yeah that's what I changed. Maybe if I had money to get a permit, <laughs> right, right. Question two. <laughs> yeah. Question two: Acting in theater or film? That's TV and movies. Which would you prefer? For me, that is, um, I always uh, go back and forth on that, but I, because mm. they're so different. I think I prefer the stage because of it's always different every yeah. single time, and yeah. the, and the audience reaction, whether whether you're doing drama or comedy, whatever it is, the way they react really feeds on uh, the performance. I love doing film and and. TV things, but it's just a whole different thing. I yeah. think uh, I I think I would say it's live, live, live man. on stage, just like this production. Thank you to Mojo Rising for putting us on. Mojo Rising, the new name in podcast. Question three: Do you want to keep this job as special co-host? <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, why wouldn't I? This good was enough. a lot of fun. If your guests are as good as these two every time, then I would. <laughs> All right. How about Keith Seltzer Jonas? Am I pronouncing that correctly? We'll take it. Okay, good. Question. All right, I asked previously, comedy in film today. Uh -huh. Can we rely on just funny? Or does it have to have a social value? Or, or something at the end, like Barat was nominated for, for awards. Can you just make a funny film anymore? Like a Three Stooges or like uh, the old silent films, you know? Or does there have to be some kind of social value attached to it? I, that's a, such an easy answer. You can make whatever you want, but it's the what? goal of it. If you want a film to be recognized, there aren't what? really comedy films anymore. Netflix has some, but otherwise... Comedy films are like the Marvel films that have comedy in them. And then there's Borat, which is social commentary, using comedy to get there. There's no Tommy Boy or Blazing Saddles anymore, <clears throat> which that had social commentary as well. But there's no just comedy because people would just think it's ridiculous. There has to, There's more to it now. But you can make whatever you want. If you want to get an Oscar nomination, then you probably can't make a Tommy Boy. <laughs> All right. Question two. You don't like that answer. You're like, bad. it's not what I wanted. No, that, that was an ex excellent answer. Okay, thanks. No, don't read my mind. There's a lot of nonsense <laughs> up there. So. This is a good question. 
for you to answer for the struggling actor or the person who wants to become an actor, got to help you. What's the easiest way to become an actor? Are there any tricks, Keith? <laughs> I mean, another easy answer, just do it. Some people think actor means like you have to be a regular on a TV show or a star of Broadway. Everyone has their own camera now with their phone. Make a, make a short film, make sketches with your friends and start doing it. The more you do it, you'll get better at it. There's no reason to not act if you want to act. You can just start doing it. Doesn't mean you're going to be famous right away, but you can just start doing it. Don't have excuses for anything creative. Just start doing it. Just start doing it. No tricks. Yeah. No, just start doing it. Watch, make things similar to the style you like and go from there. You'll learn along the way. All right. Question three, and this may be the most important one. If Captain America and Spider-Man had a fight, who would win? Captain America. He has super soldier serum. I mean, Spider-Man wouldn't be able to stand a chance. He'd get broken eventually. But he's really fast. He's fast, but so is Captain America. He was bit by the radioactive spider. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know he reads comics. I don't know. Yeah, I'll gladly answer that. Right. Thank you. All right. We got the man, the maestro. <laughs> Lee. Yes, sir. Navy Lee Simon. Yes, uh, sir. I, as you could see, I gave him the more, more intellectual questions. <laughs> so, question one. Uh, do yes, you think, sir. Do you think the U.S. is reverting back to an isolationist country. Where'd you get that question from? (laughs) (laughs) Isolation reverting back to? Yeah. (laughs) America is just America, man. It's just the same as it's always been. (laughs) No, we used to be. Not reverting back to anything. So you don't think America's the world policeman anymore? Oh, the, okay. Now you're being specific. Okay. Well, um, I tell you one thing. I think it's um, it's a really great thing that that um, Biden is getting those troops out of Afghanistan. Okay. Um, you know, America's been there for twenty years. How many lives have been lost? You know, and and Afghanistan. God bless them, but they got to you know. You know, America is not the police of the world, you know, mm-hmm. and, and people have to stand up for themselves. And the Taliban is no joke. I get that. I mean, I understand it. And my heart goes out to them. Oh, my God. You know, there's going to be a civil war there. The Taliban looks like they might come in. And, and that, that that's a whole if if there was. If someone were to ask me, you know, a young 21 year old Levy Lee, who would I, who would I fight for or against mm. in this world? It would be those people, the Taliban, because they are, they're horrible, man. What they do to women is just deplorable. And yeah, I would pick up, I would pick up arms and fight them. But at the same time, it's like 20 years for our country to be over there. You know, it's got to come. A, it's got to come a place time when you say, you know, OK, you know, enough is enough. They've had 20 years to be trained on how to take care of themselves. And I hope they can. I, I, I pray and hope that they can do it. All right. I didn't, Thank you. I didn't mean to get I didn't mean to get all deep and shit. <laughs> But I did, you know, hey, that's me. All right, question two. (laughs) Yes. Who would you like to work most with? Alive or dead? Actor, director, whatever. Who would you like Mm. to work with most? Alive or dead? Yeah, I know. Alive or dead. Wow. Oh, man. That's that's, so many people. I mean, it's not just one one person. I, I would... You know, love to sit down and work with Sidney Poitier. I'd love to, you know, um, work with, um, I'd love to work with Denzel, you know. I mean, Denzel, you know, yeah. we're, we're kind of contemporaries. He's a little bit older than me. You know, I saw him come through, but, I, you know, where he, what he has achieved, you know, for me on a, on a, 
on a creative level, it's just phenomenal, you know? Um, and, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, so many, it's so many, it's just too many people, you know? Um, yeah. All right. Now, this may be the most important question, this third question. Uh oh. Vanilla mm -hmm. or chocolate ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the day, you know, because I love them both. You know, I, I, I do it. Sometimes I have my, my, my craving for chocolate and other days I have my craving for vanilla. And it may, and maybe it, it may depend on the woman that I'm seeing at the time. I don't know. Well, what does you had to mean? think about. You have to think about that. You had to think about that, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, all, all the fans are responding. They're like, "Wow, I learned so much from this podcast." So that's Good. a credit to my uh, my uh, people here, my guests, my special guests, because on the Ardvark show, we're all special. Did you know the Ardvark has this distinction of having having the best sense of smell? It's not the dog. All right. Ah. So that's it for the question. Andrew, we have a little. Uh, we got three questions for you. No, I'm not. I'm not a president. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. The president's getting questions right now. The first one, you literally just asked somebody else. So. <laughs> oh shit. So I'm gonna skip down. I got another one. <laughs> it's about ice cream. It's about oh. ice cream. That one's out. Oh. Okay. Do you? Do you prefer playing the bad guy, like Papa Cherry in these horror movies, yeah. or playing a good guy? Well, actually, our, our newest film is, is coming out very shortly. But this has become like a franchise. Mm -hmm. The first film, we went to five film festivals. For some reason, I get tabbed as being the bad guy, and I do it very well. Because inside of me, there lives an evil. <laughs> <laughs> but outside, I'm kind of convivial. <laughs> And kind of chubby, which helps, you know, the fat, funny guy thing. But I usually get cast in, in the horrible role. Like in these horror films, I play a character that's like Harvey Weinstein, basically. So, Ooh. so I don't know. That's Would I prefer guy. to play a good guy? Yeah, why not? But nobody will give it to me. So thank you. Ah. I believe I did give you the role of a good guy. But on to the next question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can only have one cookie for the rest of your life. Oh, Jesus. What this is, is it? Bad. This is bad. Oh. It's not a brownie. It's a cookie, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like a cookie with a lot of freaking chocolate in it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a... It's not chocolate chip, but it's like that other... Like when it's melted into the cookie itself... And you can feel it. And it's kind of warm, too. Ah, the fresh baked one. Yes. Yeah. I prefer fresh baked as well. Okay, question number three. Also, that's the uh, most intense I've ever seen Andrew in my life. That was uh, amazing. That was like, wow. Yeah. I, see why, I see why you could play <laughs> evil characters if you talk about cookies like that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Think of the cookie. As a stand-up, who is your favorite stand-up of all time? That's really rough. Um, it have to be Richard Pryor, because uh, he did such magical things on stage that I just he said things that were just friggin' unbelievable. You know, people were still shaking their heads in the early seventies because people didn't talk like that, especially black people. You know, I mean, I don't know if you heard or you were asleep, but there was a problem with racism going on here. So, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you know, one of the things he did, he had his own TV show and um, they were threatening to cancel his show. I don't know why. I mean, the guy's a genius, but um, <coughs> they were threatening to cancel the show. And in one of his skits, he's walking around the corner of the studio and there's a big tiger waiting for him on the other side of the corner. 
and you just see him going, I don't know what they're going to do to me next. I don't know, you know, and there's a tiger like waiting for him. And it's just such genius shit, you know, and I have a lot of respect for him. I was able to work with his son, Richard Pryor, doing stand up oh, wow. um, at uh, Lucky Jack's. This is years ago. We did a, st- a special uh, benefit for um, Sandy. So that's a bunch of years ago. And me and Richard still maintain a friendship. He's coming up with a book. I'm going to have him on the show, Richard Pryor, Jr., Jr. Hopefully I'll get his sister, Rain, too. Wonderful, wonderful actress. Mm. You know, so, yeah, I'd have to go with Richard over George Carl and the other obvious guest, you know, who was brilliant, too. But I'd have to go with Richie. Nice. All right, and he, and he, the show to you real quick. he's leaving. We're, we're ending the show, and he's <laughs> going to take his shit or something. <laughs> All right, so any closing nah, words? I can still hear you there. We, we, he's, got no you pan, he's got no pants on. Oh, oh yeah. Shit. No way, dude. Wow. Yeah, I found that, that? Uh, somewhere online. This is the, the box shit. set of wow. uh, the Richard Pryor show. No way. How, uh, how many seasons? Was it two or something? Um, One. no, it actually got canceled because they wouldn't let him do what he wanted to do. It was very similar right. to, um, right. the Chappelle type of thing. And interestingly right. enough in the pilot, uh, John Belushi is in it. No way. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. see, I didn't yeah. even know this stuff. So it's amazing. amazing. I didn't even, I just, I saw that I could buy it and I was like, Oh, I, you know, you can't find it anywhere else to watch. No, it. no. So now you're going to cool. sell it on eBay for like $300. <laughs> Rain, Rain, Rain Pryor does a one woman show about her dad. Oh, wow. And, and she literally like channels him. It's it's just amazing to watch. She becomes her father. Wow. It's yeah. amazing to watch. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I was going to yeah. say, those are some big shoes to fill, but she literally fills the shoes. Oh, <laughs> in the big show. time. Big wow. time. <laughs> She's amazing. Big time. Amazing talent. Anybody have any closing words? That, thank you for coming, and thank you again to Mojo Rising for help sponsor this event and produce this event. Without you people, I'm lost. Well, basically, I'm lost anyway, but I'm even loster. So, any, <laughs> loster. any closing words <laughs> from you, bubs? Thanks for having uh, me on. It was awesome to talk to you guys again. It was uh, yeah, that time in New York. We didn't yeah. know that COVID was right around the corner, but it was amazing right. to be to be able to create all that stuff and have chats backstage and have great moments on stage. So seeing, yeah, all of you again, it just brings that back of how fun that was. So yeah. thanks for putting this together, yeah. Andrew. I'll never forget at the sound check when the PR guy was uh, snoring. That was, <laughs> that was the highlight, the highlight, the highlight of, of uh, the show for me. So, L- Lee, you have any closing words, Lee? You know, I, I, I thank you, Andrew. Um, it, it's always great to see you and be around you, bro. You know, we had some, you know, really wonderful moments in, in New York and uh, on and off the stage. And, you know, I appreciate you big time. You know, uh, Keith and Artie, you guys are, 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 in my mind, big talents. And I just wish you the best as you, you know, keep walking your path, you know. And don't don't deviate, you know. Stay on your path. You you know, stay on your path. Yeah, that's all I got. Thank you, Lee, and good luck yeah. with Fractured, and Thank you. Uh, the movie version of your wonderful play, Thank Central you. Park West. I guess at Central Park in Central yeah. Park West, which yeah. is so 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 important today. You know. Oh, I also have a memoir that's going to be coming out, um, which hopefully by the fall or by the end of the year called odyssey towards the light about my crazy life yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, i've lived long enough and i've survived long enough to write a memoir hey how about that did you get a <laughs> did you get a publisher my friend yeah i, I do i have a publisher yeah. excellent great yeah, can't nice. wait to see that and hopefully we can have you on the show again in a few weeks or something you know when yeah. you know everybody else says no to me so uh, uh <laughs> Keith, anything from you? You fucking handsome devil, you. Anything oh, from thank you? you? Thank you so much. Uh, no, like I said, it's great to see everyone, and I love that 
because the, the last year took a lot of energy out of everyone, but it's not a surprise to see all of you guys still like, yeah, I got all the stuff I'm working on. So that's yeah. great. Just just keep on doing it. Artie, Artie, thanks for being co-host. Any other words you have for the group here as a, as a special co-host? Thank you. Uh, yeah. As the special co-host, uh, it's kind of uh, along the similar lines. It's great. It's really great to see all you guys, and it uh, it brings back that. It was so sad to me that that, the short run that we had that yeah. uh, we could, you know, that was a show that I thought if this thing ran for five years, I would have been happy doing it for five years. Yeah. It was such a good group yeah. of people and so much fun. Um, so it's great. It's great to see you guys all again. And it's like right back at it, you know? So thank uh, you for being yeah, here. Same thing, you know, keep so, on doing and send me, send me your stuff whenever you guys do anything, you know? Yeah, you know, yes, sir. yes, sir. Thanks to the stuff. Artie, will you help me again next week, or are you resigning? I shall. All right, thank I'm you. Out. Artie's going to stay for next week's show. <laughs> no, no, but he, he's got to sit there without any pants on, which was obvious when he got up. But there's another show, Mojo <laughs> Rising, is having another show at 7 p.m. I'm going to drop into that show after I get a little bite to eat, a little nosh. That chocolate chip cookie sounds good, too. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Keith and Lee look like they're in the same box now. So that's pretty, yeah. that's pretty in, the, pretty. in the same room in LA. That's why I have this background. So it's not right. obvious. Are you going to start massaging him? <laughs> so. Thank you, everyone. All right, guys. Good, good health to all. Good health to yeah. all. Thank you so much. Yeah.